second, Bob. the, I guess, the thrust of your message this morning to the troops? Yeah, no, I, as I have the last couple of years, I wanted to get things kicked off, get started, but the real message this year was a change in level of expectation. Uh, I think it's critically important that they understand and we all understand that uh, 2011 is not going to be a year where small bits of incremental progress are adequate. Uh, and uh, reminded them that the goal of the organization has been from the day I got started uh, to build an organization that can compete and can win a uh, championship. Uh, and uh, until we win a National League championship, we're not going to be satisfied with incremental progress. Critically important they understand that right up front. Important they understand that I have faith in them, uh, enthusiastic about where we're headed, uh, but that the level of expectation is very high. You say small bits of incremental uh, progress. Is there then a quantifiable number, or how, do you not want to marry yourself to a, a numeral? I guess? No, I, I, again, I think that uh, uh, as an organization, we need to uh, uh, commit to winning a, uh, a, a championship. And uh, you know, there may be steps uh, to get there, but until we get there, uh, we can't say we've achieved our goal. And so whether it's five more games or 20 more games, I don't think a number is critical. What's important is we have a clear goal at the end of the day, and we keep our eye focused on that prize. And other than the guys in the jerseys, what have the, the men in the shirts and ties done? to move that process along? Well, I think that, that what, uh, uh, what the organization has done, if you look back over the past several years, is we focused on development and scouting, we focused on structure, and really what we focused on this year is that major league level. Uh, and bringing uh, uh, Clint Hurdle in, I believe, is going to have a measurable impact uh, as we're looking at energy level, enthusiasm, a guy with experience who's been there, who's done it, will demonstrate the on-field leadership that we need to see to have an exceptional season uh, in 2011 in Pittsburgh. I know you haven't been here very long, but what differences, if any, do you see with this camp compared to one year ago? Well, I think there's no question that what you do see is uh, a commitment to each other, but the energy level, the enthusiasm, uh, and uh, the belief uh, that, uh, that Clint and the rest of his team, I think the combination particularly with his experience and with deep history within the organization, combining really to give every opportunity for these kids not only to perform up to their level, uh, which arguably we did not do last year, but to exceed and achieve something great. Obviously the ramifications would, would be obvious if you do have that progress that you're seeking, but what if there's not even incremental progress this year? But I guess whose head is on the block if that doesn't happen? Yeah, I think that, uh, Rob, today is the... Uh, First day that I've, I've addressed the group, we're getting started. We have our first uh, spring training game uh, uh, coming up uh, Saturday. Uh, and so it's not the right time to start speculating on what if we fail. What we need to do is be focused on what the goal is, what the target is, and be committed to achieve it. What did you have to do to bring this weather to? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I think it's too early to start speculating. I, I saw the, the story yesterday starting to speculate about contract term. That, that's not productive. It's not the uh, the right use of energy. It's not the right place for us to focus as an organization. I know you've talked about the impact Hurdle can make. Do you feel like the players that are here, is this a better team than was here last year? I, I believe it is. I believe that you have uh, both uh, uh, some supplements to the team that we've brought in. Obviously, you see that on uh, pitching staff, first base, right field. Uh, at the same time, you also see a year of maturation from what last year was a very young team to this year, which is a very young team with an extra year of experience. And that also is where the leadership still has a great opportunity to mold uh, and to inspire that uh, team to uh, everything they can possibly achieve this year. You, you made those, some significant moves in the offseason. And, and Frank was saying, too, that you even have some, some room to, to add pieces, you know, to, to with, with a, I guess, right now as an organization so that we are not handcuffed uh, and uh, that we have to make either moves that we don't want to make or are unable to make moves that we do want to make purely because of financial reasons. We're able to drive that from baseball reasons. As Neil said, 
consistently our current payroll is more a reflection of the group of players that we have uh, than a, a reflection of the limitation that's, uh, that's put on him. And so having a certain amount of flexibility is important, whether it's this year, whether it's next year. As the players mature, we certainly believe we need to hold on to and sign some of these core players for a, a, a long term. Those are important steps that will come as, as we move forward. How much does public sentiment or feedback, um, not necessarily weigh into your decision, but um, how much do you take that into account um, when people crow and aren't happy? No, I, I, I absolutely uh, uh, listen to it. Uh, it makes a huge difference and uh, have a tremendous amount of respect for and appreciation for the fans. Uh, that's the reason the franchise exists. It's one of the reasons that Pittsburgh is such a tremendous baseball town uh, and sports town. Uh, and uh, so I think we owe our fans uh, every bit of opportunity to listen, every bit of loyalty uh, that we possibly can. Uh, and so it always is a, uh, a, a part of the decision-making process, and it's always certainly part of, uh, of my mindset. Uh, at the same time, uh, we also have to be able to make, and Neil has to be able to make, uh, tough moves, and certainly we've seen that over the past few years, but always with the goal that what we need to do is put long-term a better team on the field in Pittsburgh, which is really what I believe the fans want, need, and deserve. As you stand here today, you can say that in the past couple years, as you've stood here at the same timeline, you feel this is going forward more than it has in the past few years. I'm extremely enthusiastic about 2011. Uh, I really believe that uh, we significantly underperformed last year, uh, and uh, and we know that, and we've turned the page, and it doesn't do any good to go back and, uh, and beat ourselves on that. But we address the issues that I think most held us back and are ready to move forward, I think, in a much better position this year. Much has been made of Clint Hurdle and the staff and the positive impact that they're expected to have here, but ultimately, doesn't it come down to the players and their ability to live up to expectations? Absolutely. It's something they didn't do last year. A absolutely, and I think that's something that, uh, that, frankly, the organization and Clint have made perfectly clear. He's not going to throw a single strike. He's not going to hit a single home run. He's not going to steal a single base. Uh, he's not going to make an error. He's not going to. Uh, he, he's not going to play the game. At the same time, setting that level of expectation uh, is critical. Knowing that the organization's not going to accept underperformance is critical. And having an experienced leader who has been there before, who has led a young team, who has been there as a player, who's been there as a manager, who's been there as a, as a coach. Uh, in all those, I think bringing that level of leadership and enthusiasm will help the team live up to their full potential. But ultimately, it's the players who have to get the job done. Ultimately, that's where accountability for every single play and game sits on the field. The address in there to the team wasn't for public consumption, but what was um, sort of the overriding sentiment? And was there any feedback from the players to you? I'm sorry, Colin, that's not for public, public consumption. consumption. <laughs> Any of it, though? What about a, in a wide swathing? No, absolutely. I, I think that uh, 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 what, I, what I believe uh, the, uh, uh, the core messages were there were to make sure that they understand that the organization standing with them, that I have faith and trust in them, and they need to have faith and trust in the Pittsburgh Pirates, uh, that they have a responsibility uh, to the history of the franchise and to the fans and to Pittsburgh and to themselves to achieve everything they possibly can uh, in 2011, uh, and I believe that's what uh, that's what I hope they took away, uh, and that's the most important thing they can carry with them every day as they get up in the morning, put on a Pittsburgh Pirate uniform, and are proud to be a Pittsburgh Pirate. I know it's looking way in the future, but looking at the draft and the number one pick, do you have the resources to sign any player with any agent? Um, yes, absolutely. Uh, again, as we talked a little bit about making sure we put ourselves in a position where we're not handicapped. might be, but whoever that right player might be, uh, we certainly will not be in a position where we select based on dollars or signability. We're going to uh, select for the greatest impact, as we have. Uh, I think that's a, uh, a good track record that we intend to continue, because it is critical that we source the most talented possible players every place we can, whether that's signing a young Mexican player, whether it's taking the best player in the draft, uh, and being in a position which I hope we're not in again.